Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Now, you might be wondering to yourself, Alec, what exactly am I looking at? Is this some kind of amazing cinematic cutscene delivering some kind of impactful monologue, progressing the story forward, introducing interesting characters? No, not really. Okay, you might be thinking, maybe it's a really cool post-credits easter egg. No, not really. What you're looking at here is a loading screen to one of the game's campaign missions. It's a pretty cool loading screen, admittedly, but unfortunately it's also one of the more impressive aspects of this game. Today we're taking a look at the new World War II first-person shooter, Enemy Front. Now, Enemy Front is a game that I've been looking forward to for a good couple of months now. After all, World War II first-person shooters are some of my favorite games out there, and the thought of one taking us to environments and battlefields that we haven't seen before sounded pretty interesting. And it still is. After all, places like the Polish capital city Warsaw and the French countryside aren't places that we're used to seeing in World War II games. Unfortunately, your interest in the unique setting is going to disappear pretty quick, as the game itself isn't very interesting, or even very good. That's not to say that there wasn't some potential here. In fact, there was a lot of potential, and the core gameplay mechanics are actually remarkably solid. The gunplay works well enough, though most of the guns don't feel very satisfying to use. The levels are open enough to allow players to choose their own tactics and approach things from a variety of different ways. And the stealth mechanics are surprisingly fleshed out for a first-person shooter. It plays out almost like a more linear Far Cry 3 at times, as the player has binoculars that they can use to mark targets from a distance, you can throw rocks to distract guards and get them out of your way, you can sneak up behind guards and pick them off one by one, or you can go in guns blazing with an MP40 and kill everything you see. There are some really good ideas at the heart of this game, and the core mechanics actually function pretty well. When everything goes right and the game works as planned, it's actually a surprisingly fun first-person shooter. Unfortunately, things only ever go as planned about a quarter of the time. The game is one of the most unpolished and, frankly, amateurish games I've ever had the experience of playing. The production values for this game just feel really low, and the whole thing seems like it was rushed to market. We'll get the obvious thing out of the way first. The game is one of the ugliest first-person shooters I've played on the Xbox 360. Supposedly, the thing runs on CryEngine 3, but to be honest, it kind of looks like an early Unreal Engine game from 2005. Animations are stiff and jerky, character models are poorly textured, the environments are muddy, everything blends together. The only thing about the visuals that's really even passable is the lighting effects, and even those have some flaws, as shadows from lights on your hand often look grainy and pasted on. The audio isn't much better either. While the soundtrack itself is appropriately dramatic and can do a good job of getting your blood pumping at times, the voice acting ranges from passable, like the actor for main character Robert Hawkins, to downright terrible, like almost every generic unnamed NPC in the game. In fact, I want you to listen to this guy in the background, okay? This is supposed to be after a Nazi plane bombs a church we're hiding in. He's supposed to be terrified, in pain, I don't know what, but just give it a listen. <laughs> and things only get worse from here. Remember what I said about animations being poor and character models looking like crap? That's all pretty much summed up in this scene here. Well, there's a shortcut you can take. Now go, son. On your way. You know Cosera? Know him. He was raised at the Paris orphanage. <laughs> now go with God. All of you. And as if that didn't make matters worse, you're going to be seeing the same handful of poorly rendered character models throughout the whole game. In fact, that's one of the biggest issues with the game. It just feels... lazy. 
Enemy soldiers only seem to use the same two character models. Allied resistance fighters only seem to use the same one. And apparently, executed prisoners in a Nazi prison camp were all the exact same person. I mean, really, guys? Really? We couldn't be bothered to make two character models for the executed prisoners? At least? But no, as you're fighting through this makeshift Nazi prison, wasting German patrols the entire way, going to rescue an allied soldier from potential execution, everyone that has died so far has been the exact same person. Apparently, Nazi Germany perfected cloning technology and tested it on their POWs before getting bored with them and killing all of them. And it doesn't even stop there. God only help you if you go somewhere that the dev team didn't think you would. The textures and environments will turn into... well... whatever this is. Or what about this floating grass? This, this isn't even in a weird part of a stage that you're not supposed to go to. This is following the main path headed directly to my objective. And the grass is just kind of floating over the ground. It's things like this that are so jarring and really break the game. Things that even one-man indie games that you could buy for a dollar manage to get right. Just little things like this really ruin the experience of an otherwise solid game. It feels so rushed, so lazy. It, it feels like the developers either didn't have the time or the interest to iron out bugs in some of the most fundamental aspects of a game. And don't even get me started on the clipping. This game has some of the most catastrophic clipping I have ever seen. This right here is a cutscene about an hour or an hour and a half into the campaign that takes place after you defend a church from a Nazi assault. It's supposed to be reasonably dramatic. You're obviously supposed to take it seriously and, well, this happens. Just watch. Check your men! Your ammunition! This isn't over! Jesus, I don't know how much more we can take of this. We will take everything they throw at us. This church cannot fall. Where are our reinforcements? They are pinned down a few blocks from here. <sighs> we need to get ready for... Stuka! Really? Really? All the time that your game spent in development, and no one ever caught a mistake like this? No one ever thought to fix that? Really? It's, is, is, this the, is this the best that they're capable of? I mean, this is supposed to be a triple A game. This is supposed to be a big summer shooter. And th this, this is the effort that came out of it. I, I could probably code something more stable than this. I mean, come on, guys. Is, is clipping really that difficult of an issue to, to fix? Is it that hard to make it so that NPCs don't morph into each other in some kind of terrifying threesome of clipping from hell or something? The, f the floating grass, the horrible facial animations, the same stupid corpse in that stupid prison camp over and over, the horrible clipping abomination, the, the, the muddy textures, the, the stiff animations, the awkward character models, the poor shadows, <sighs> everything about this game's production values screams like it was made on a budget of about $200 by a team of 10 people that had never coded a game before, or at least certainly never used CryEngine before. And what's most disappointing about all of that is beyond these crippling, unexcusable bugs, there's actually a solid foundation at work. 
Like I said, the core gameplay mechanics work well and are actually pretty fun and provide a fairly unique spin on the tired World War II shooter genre. But it's so hard to appreciate that fresh approach when everything else about your game is so fundamentally wrong. Aside from the glaring issues with the presentation, there's a few other problems with the game, most notably the story and characters, who are fairly one-dimensional and devoid of any personality. The story itself jumps around a lot and tries to tell a tale in a non-chronological fashion, but it doesn't really work well, it doesn't develop the characters very well, and doesn't give you much of a reason to care. Meanwhile, the main character is kind of unbelievable, as we're supposed to expect that the first time he ever picks up a gun to go and join the resistance fighting in France, he's somehow more than okay with sneaking up behind Nazi soldiers and stabbing them through the neck and putting bullet after bullet in them. I mean, I understand that from a gameplay perspective, you kind of have to have him stab Nazis in the neck, but this is supposed to be the first time he's ever killed something before. At least a little bit of dialogue or some kind of acknowledgement showing that he just killed a person for the first time and is maybe a little shaken by that would be nice and maybe make things a little more believable. As it stands, it's kind of hard to relate with any of the characters. The story itself is kind of flat and not particularly interesting, and the development of the protagonist is unrealistic at best. And to be honest, that's about all there is to say about Enemy Front. The single player campaign is... well, it's everything I've already told you about. There's a bare bones multiplayer function tacked on as well, but it's nothing particularly special, and when I tried to play it some, what, four whole days after launch, I was unable to get into a single multiplayer lobby for a good half hour, which doesn't exactly bode well for any sort of multiplayer community for the game. All in all, Enemy Front is a game that I wanted so much to love. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of World War II era games, and the core gameplay mechanics are, are good, they're fun, and when everything works well, you're you have a good time sneaking through the French countryside, stabbing Nazis in the back and shooting them with machine guns and blowing up their ammunition supplies. When everything works, it's a good game. Unfortunately, everything rarely works, and the horrible visuals, poor voice acting, lackluster story, and game-breaking god-awful glitches just bring down the experience. It hurts me to say this, it really does, but Enemy Front gets a very disappointing score of a 4 out of 10. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon.